Well, good afternoon, friends. Welcome back to our channel, Home Free Alaska. I am super excited about this video. Those of you that have been following along, you know why. We are really excited. The day has finally come that we go to the airport to pick up Kellen, one of Parker's best friends who's actually gonna be staying with us for a year, for the next year. We will have guardianship of him for that period of time. Um, and then beyond that is to be determined. But we love Kellen. We became really good friends with him and his grandmother when we lived at the apartment. They lived above us before we moved to Alaska. Alaska, and that's how we met them. So this has been much anticipated, lots of planning and a lot of things to get this in place and the day has finally come. So we thought that we would take you guys with us. We have to drive down to Anchorage. We're gonna leave a little bit early because we do have to run a couple errands. I have a sweet neighbor, our closest neighbor, which isn't really close, but out here, she's our closest. Um, she's an older woman and she's she's in need of some flour for making her bread. So we're gonna grab her some flour while we are in town and then we have to drop off our generator that is under warranty, the generator drama. It just continues. You guys know we're off grid here in Alaska and when the sun is not shining, we use the generator to charge our batteries. And so anyway, it has taken a crap on us and so we're gonna drop it off at this place that's supposed to troubleshoot it and determine if they can fix it. Then we are gonna head down to a store in Anchorage to look at some really durable Alaskan type jackets. We wanna get some really, really insulated jackets for when we start traveling that frozen river to go out to the remote cabin. And then we head to the airport to pick up Callan. Dang! Driving down the road that I grew up on once again It's when I pass your door the memories come back again Pictures of us flooding back just like a wave Makes me wonder what happened, what you're up to today Remember when we stole your mother's car, we drove for days Teenagers with too many feelings and rage. We were higher than the ceiling. All right, so we just checked the mail, and <laughs> I have to say, let me give a shout out to the Dush family. They sent us another sweet card, and um, she taught me how to say her name properly, their last name, thank you. And it was a retirement card, and I'm such, I don't know what it is, I am such a sap. I literally cannot read a card or comments from you guys about Joe's retirement from the military without bawling my eyes out every time. I'll be reading it and I just start like <laughs> getting all choked up. It's just so sweet and just thanking him and us for the sacrifice for our country, friends, it was our pleasure. It really was. I mean, 
we're honored to have done it. And um, so thank you to the Dush family. They said, Joe, as you look back on this fruitful season of making a difference through all you've done, may the Lord bless you with satisfaction. And as you look ahead, may the Lord bless you with new and fulfilling joys in your retirement. Congratulations, Jim and Gwen Dush. And she says, Tina and Joe, thank you both for your service to our country. You're very welcome, my friend, and thank you for putting a smile on our face today. All right, Joe's in back unloading the generator with the Furman generator guy, so hopefully we'll get that all figured out. It's funny, we, we applied for the warranty with it, and uh, <laughs> I know some people say we can go down to Costco and get the Furman, and if you do, you don't have to deal with the warranty. You could just take it back if it breaks or something. Um, try not to get these people in there but we went ahead and did the warranty because Costco is far away from us and we didn't want to drive all the way down there to buy the Furman so we bought the Furman at our local town that was closest to us and did the warranty but they tried to tell us that they weren't going to cover it because they emailed Joe and asked him what do you use the generator for and I knew in my gut when they asked that question I told Joe I said they're trying to disqualify you from falling under the warranty and so Joe told him he said we're off-grid and he said we use the generator to charge our solar batteries when they are when we don't have sunshine and so the guy came back originally and tried to tell us um, stated like the policy section in the warranty saying that we don't qualify for the warranty some whole blurb about if you use it to as so a sole power source for your home if you're off-grid then you don't fall under the warranty and I told Joe, I said, nope, you'd better email him back because clarify, we do not live off the generator. There are some people up here that don't have solar and things and they do live off their generator for power to power their little cabins. We do not. We have an entire solar system package the batteries, everything. The only time we use that generator is when we don't have enough sunshine. It's like every three or four days, we charge the batteries with the generator for a few hours. Uh, so anyway, Joe emailed him and he came back and said, oh yeah, okay, I guess you do qualify under this section of the warranty. So they're gonna honor that, thankfully. We just bought the generator. It's maybe a month and a half old and uh, it seized up and just stopped working. And Joe's pretty mechanically inclined, but we have the warranty, so why not use it, right? Let them fix their generator. So anyway, I'm feeling nervous and uh, about Kellen coming excited, but nervous. This is a huge change for our family. It's something that we've wanted for a long time. I've, I expressed that to you guys in the last video, but uh, we didn't really think it would happen. Uh, just a lot of variables in there and, you know, they're coming like I just I was just texting his mom and they just landed in Seattle and their next flight is the last one from Seattle to Anchorage so we will be seeing Kellen in about four hours we should be picking him up from the airport and uh, little guy's probably gonna be super tired it's been a very long day you know there's a four hour time difference from the East Coast in Virginia to here in Alaska so he's been up for hours already and there's several legs of um, the flight to get here it's not like it's just one straight shot so they've been running through airports they just made it to Seattle and barely made it to their connecting flight because the previous flight was delayed they've ne neither of them have ever flown before so that can be a little stressful so uh, I, I feel bad for his mom that's very stressful but we're gonna pick them both up tonight and we're gonna be taking his mom over to a hotel she will be staying in a hotel and then she flies out tomorrow morning to go back to Virginia so Lots of changes, friends. I'm very excited for obvious reasons. I'm a little nervous. Lots of adjustments for all of us, Kellen included. But I think this will be really good for him. What you want, P? You want a hot cocoa? Yeah, I want a hot cocoa. You want a hot cocoa? cocoa. Do they have cookies? Babe, you're not going to win the snow machine. Do you know What are the chances of you winning the raffle? If I win it, is that on? Yeah, it's on, Joe. So why are you, what do you got to say, Joe? If you win it, what? There's going to be something nasty. Oh. Okay, then you can't say that. <laughs> this is a family channel, Joe. Can't be talking about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you never know. You might get lucky, you know what I'm saying? No, I already told you I was going to win it. So if you win the snow machine, what are you going to do with the snow machine you have now? Sell it. Like for a spare? Yeah. If you win the snow machine, I want the snow machine. Because it's a brand new one. <laughs> <laughs> so we only have two. 
chocolate chip cookies right now. Do you want to try one of the other ones? What other ones did you have again? We have red velvet, monster cookie, raspberry, and peanut butter. Oh, peanut butter. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, it's pink, Joe. Oh, okay. Just for no, you. Like pink. you it's that? pink, Joe. It's your color. I just did that. Oh. Okay, no, we're fighting over cup holders. <laughs> Here, Parker. Thank you. Oh, those are cookies. <laughs> it's like a, the size of a pizza. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. You guys have a good day. You Thank too. You. Oh, wow. Look at the size of these cookies. This is ridiculous. I remember thinking if I only could stop the time Way back when we didn't care what they said People could stare, I didn't give a damn Cause I was being next to you Way back when we didn't care what they said People could stare, I didn't give a damn Cause all I needed was my friend Way back when Way back And we started up a band in my garage We thought our dream would take us so far But after a week or so it all just fell apart But we were higher than the ceiling Middle fingers to the sky I remember thinking if I Stop the time right now Way back when we didn't care what they said People could stare, I didn't give a damn Cause I was being next to you Way back when we didn't care what they said People could stare, I didn't give a damn Cause all I needed was my friend Way back Alright, we got some really nice jackets. We even got one for Kellen because we're going to need to be fully insulated once we hit that river to go out to the remote cabin for the first time. So we have about two hours or so to waste before Kellen's flight gets in. I think we're going to head over and get something to eat. We only had breakfast this morning before we left the cabin, so we're all starving. And uh, yeah, we're in downtown Anchorage. We don't come down here very often and it's really busy. Like downtown Anchorage is just like living in the city. Like you have everything down here. I'm really glad we don't live in downtown Anchorage. <laughs> All right, dinner was fabulous. Shrimp and crab fettuccine. Oh my goodness, it was really good. And now it is time to go pick up Callum from the airport. He should be landing in about 15 minutes. And we're a little excited, aren't we, Micah? <laughs> we are so excited. Babe, how are you feeling about this? Little Callum coming to be with us. It's fine. It's fine. Baby, you are, that is way too, whoa. Way too much excitement, Joseph. I need you to rein that in there, buddy. Okay? 
<laughs> he really is excited, I promise. <laughs> I've been married to him for almost 24 years. I promise he's excited, even if he doesn't say much. You don't know that. I do know that, Joe. No, I'm just kidding. You're kidding about what? Me knowing that? Yeah, you know that? Oh yeah, you know I know that. No, you don't know that. I know that I know that you know that I know that, Joe. <laughs> oh, hi! Oh! <laughs> Tell me he's not crying. Tell me he's not crying. Oh, Kellen! Hi, me! Are you guys ready for go outside and go sledding? Yes. You guys look like little Eskimos all bundled up. <laughs> there you go. The left hand in here. My little snow pants fit you pretty good, huh, Kellen? Definitely. Yeah, and that jacket, look, that's a perfect fit. We did good on that size. Y'all need more socks? I just can't I'm put sweating. my hand in there, too. Maybe Mr. Joe can help you push it through there. Right here is. <laughs> It's hard for him to get it through, Joe, especially with the jacket. Oh, I just gotta loosen it. I think it's already loosened all the way. Yeah. All right, you guys out? keep your beanies on, though, to keep your ears warm, okay? Okay. Oh, that is wet. Hey, what's going on out here? <laughs> Not much. Can you make a snowball? I'm gonna go down some more. Here. I'm gonna go down some more. Follow the path that Parker made. It's easier. It's gonna get a workout. Parker, yeah? We already had this conversation. <laughs> he said we already had this conversation. Yeah, this is did. too much work. <laughs> you can do it, Kellen. Come on. He says your boots are too big for him. I know. I don't. He's just gonna have to deal with them until we can get into town to get him some boots. Woohoo! Oh. You ready, Kellen? <laughs> you still see me. <laughs> Hold on to the sides, okay? Okay. Here, scoot your butt back. Huh? Scoot your butt to the back of the sled. All the way back, and then put your feet inside the sled, and I'll give you a push. All the way back, all the way back, almost there, good. Put your feet in, there you go. That's how you sled, okay? If your feet are out, it's gonna slow you down, right? Okay. And we don't wanna go slow, we wanna go fast. Yes. <laughs> all right, hold on, you ready? Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> You went fast, Kellen. Good job. <laughs> there you go. Follow the footsteps I made. Don't make new ones. You're going to fall down. Good morning, friends. I don't have a clue what I look like right now. Okay, I'm just putting that out there. We got up, made breakfast burritos this morning, and uh, wow, I'm pretty sure I look like Cindy Lou Who. What is that? like a beehive on my head so forgive me it is what it is today is a snow day that's all it is we're gonna sled 
and have fun and have hot cocoa and just hang out. Tomorrow we have to go back into town because Kellen needs some clothes. He doesn't have any clothes um, and definitely no winter gear. So we're gonna take him into town and get him everything he needs. So right now the poor little guy's wearing my snow pants and my snow boots, which obviously are too big for him, but it's all we had. <laughs> the jacket we got him fit him perfectly though, so I'm really happy about that because those jackets are rated like, I think she said like from negative 25 to negative 45, something like that. It's not anywhere near as cold as that. I think we're actually in the 20s today, but it fits him perfectly, so. First night went well. The boys played for a little bit. Um, it was late when we got home, but they begged to be able to play for a little bit before bedtime. So of course we let them, tucked them in, said prayers. Uh, I could tell he got a little quiet when I tucked him into bed. It's hard. You know, I, I grew up in foster care in my early teenage years, and I do remember the hardest part being that first night in a bed that's not yours in a home that's not yours. Everything calms, everything gets quiet, everybody goes to sleep, and you're kind of left there laying in the bed, and it just kind of hits you what's just happened. And he definitely got quiet, and I could see a visual difference in his demeanor when it was bedtime, um, but he did good. We gave hugs and kisses and said prayers and tickled and, you know, tried to take his mind off of it, but he did well. He did really well. Oh, you're gonna use like the boogie board thing? Okay. Think it's gonna go fast enough? Yeah, my friends have a bunch of these. Okay. Show me how it's done, P. Diddy. You don't hold on. Oh, you do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, he lost his sled. I'm coming. Poor baby. He is not used to walking in snow at all. It's a workout. You lost your sled, buddy. It's okay. Parker will help you grab it. Yeah, he lost the sled pee. <laughs> so we need to put a string on it. Just put the string on your arm next time and that way it won't get away from you like that. Okay. You good? Yeah. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Good job! You're going down head first, Parker? I'm gonna try. Oh! oh! goes down to the pond. I came out here after I got dressed and poor little Kellen was trying to come back up the hill and he was just sinking down into the snow. So we made a trail. You know, if you pack it down, you can almost make like stairs and then if you just keep taking that same trail, it packs the snow and it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> poor little guy. He is gonna be tired tonight. Hold on tight. Whew. You can go fast? Yeah. Actually, I was gonna do it like this, like a vet pack. Like a backpack? You might want to watch where you're going though. Okay. That way you know what's happening. <laughs> All right, hold on for dear life. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, Callan, good job. That was a good one. He went far. Yeah. Go pee. All right, you guys, so the kids are still outside sledding. 
they've literally been out there all morning. They got up, played army men for a while with walkie talkies, had a breakfast burrito, and then they've just been outside this whole time. <laughs> so it's great. It It is really nice having Kellen with us again. Parker and him get along so well. They have a little bit of tiffs here and there, but what kids don't, you know, but it's, we usually can squash it pretty quickly. Just thought I would sit down and chat with you guys for a second. Um, I felt last night when we drove home, I was really super quiet and kind of, I don't know, I, I was a little conflicted and my heart was happy, but my heart was sad. You know, I checked his mom into the hotel, made sure she was safe and in her room and all that. She flew out this morning um, and hugged her and we had a chance to have a conversation in person before we left her. And she got a chance to love on Kellen and say her goodbyes. And that was hard for me, I guess, as a mom. I can't imagine, I can't, I literally can't imagine what she was feeling. But I can say that I'm super proud of her for being able to make a brave decision to love Callan enough to put him in a situation that she feels is better uh, than wh where he was. And that takes, that takes a lot. <laughs> so. Anyway, I just, you know, my heart was sad on the way home. I was happy, the boys talked. They did not stop talking the whole way home from the airport and it is a long drive back to the cabin. They didn't miss a beat. It was the sweetest thing. Um, but I just, I couldn't stop thinking about his mama and what she was feeling, especially at the hotel. Like I was just saying, when all the noise goes away, you're by yourself, you lay your head on that pillow. I can't imagine the thoughts that were going through her mind, so. You know, I I woke up at five o'clock this morning, like out of nowhere. And then I couldn't fall back asleep for like an hour and a half. I just laid tossing and turning. And just, I literally, ha I had like this vision of our past, I'd say five years, just like flashes of memories and things that we've gone through, our goals our struggles, our victories, like everything was flashing in my mind. And all that came to my mind, friends, was like how much God's plan is always better than our own. Like we think we got it all figured out. And every time the Lord's like, no, you don't. And you guys know, I shared with you that Joe and I tried to adopt for several years and it just didn't work out. And, um, Looking at it now, almost like from a 30,000 foot view down on what has transpired over the last couple of years, I'm like, that time in mine and Joe's marriage when we were trying to adopt wasn't the best time in our marriage. And so I think that God knew that. And I think that God said, I have a boy for you. Um, but not right now. <laughs> he knows more than we do. And you know, we try to force things sometimes when we want it so bad. We're blinded by emotions. We're blinded by our desire of what we want that we really can't see anything else. And sometimes we try to kick down the doors that God's closing for a reason. And nothing ever good comes from that. And I just couldn't help but lay in bed thinking, thank you, God. Thank you for not letting that adoption go through. I think it was like two and a half years ago, even though we wanted it to go through. Because looking back now, I can see that we weren't in the right place to take on that child. And now we've done so much for our marriage in the last year, mentally, emotionally, intimately, financially. Joe and I, it is like night and day where we are today versus where we were a year and a half, two years ago. And for those of you that follow my podcast, Life with Tina, you know what I'm talking about. So if you haven't checked out my podcast, it's it's nothing spiffy. It's just me talking about life with you. And it's kind of a 
spinoff of our channel, our YouTube channel, but it's really life behind the scenes of our of our homestead, our life, marriage, raising children, living with the culture, um, just everything. So it's like all topics. So no topic is off limits there. And I am really super transparent. Uh, Joe and I both are. I have Joe's full permission to share the things that I share over on the podcast because I do go into some some things that are a little bit personal, actually a lot of bit personal. <laughs> and uh, I just feel like looking back on it right now, it's like so much has happened. Everything with the retirement, moving to Alaska. You know, we chose to sell our homestead in Virginia early, earlier than we had to. We sold our homestead in Virginia about nine months, 10 months before we moved to Alaska. And the reason we did that is because the market was so good, we wanted to sell while the market was hot in hopes of getting all the value out of it that we possibly could, and we did. And But that meant that now we had to live in a temporary living situation until we left for Alaska. So we went and rented an apartment. And I'll tell you guys, I went to that apartment kicking and screaming. I hated living in apartment life. That's just me. I went from country and raising chickens to city life, living in apartment with tons of neighbors, sirens, car horns, people in the business. Like I wasn't used to that. And I went kicking and screaming the whole way. And I look at it now and God's like, see little silly girl, as much as I hated that apartment, if we didn't move to that apartment, I would have never met Kellen. We would have never met Kellen. We were sitting out on the apartment balcony one day, drinking coffee in the morning, Joe and I, and I saw this lady get out of her car with this little boy, and she said, good morning, and mind you, it struck me because there, not everybody there was friendly. I would say good morning and hi to people walking by and they would just look at me. I'm like, okay, never mind. <laughs> you might need a second cup of coffee, but she, was very happy. Hi, how are you guys doing? And she said, I noticed you had a little boy and I just got my grandson recently. Um, and I was wondering if maybe they could play. And the rest is history. From that day forward, Callan and Parker were joined at the hips and we just got very close with Callan's grandma and his mom. And uh, anyway, I look back and I'm like, I fought the Lord the whole time about moving to that apartment. And all the while he had a plan, not just a plan for our family, but I feel like a plan for Kellen and for Kellen's family. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. So, you know, we are doing a one year guardianship just to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about it. Cause I know you guys probably have questions. Um, and like I said before, when I announced that we were getting Kellen, I will never go into detail of why he is here with us. That's personal to his family out of respect for his mom and his grandma, his family. I would never ever do that to them. So all that matters is he's here. You know, we don't know if this is going to go beyond the year. We, we have signed and agreed to a year guardianship for us and Kellen. Um, beyond that year, we are going into this knowing, emotionally knowing that this may not go beyond a year. If they decide that they want him back, um, if the mom decides she's in a better place in a year and wants Kellen back, that is her right. That is her child. And we will support her decision 100%. Um, but if not, and she wants him to stay beyond that, we are absolutely open to that as well. And we would love that. So I'm just, we're going into this knowing that this could be temporary, but we are going to give him as much as we can in the year that we have him in the family environment homeschooling him, the one-on-one -on -one education, um, sitting at the dinner table as a family every night over dinner. We do our Bible reading after dinner as a family, devotions in the morning before school. You know, these are things that Callan doesn't typically do back home. And I think that, you know, Callan knows the Lord. He loves the Lord. We would take him to church with us and stuff in Virginia. And uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm just going to try to have as much of an impact on him that we can in the year that we have him. So, but you know, it, it's funny cause a lot of people, um, with the podcast that I do, a lot of people, 
I've gotten comment, mostly good, mostly people love it, and especially women can really relate to where I'm coming from on a lot of topics when it comes to raising children and marriage. Um, and trying to have a successful marriage in the culture that we live in today is extremely hard. But I do have some people that are like, why would you share such personal things? Why, you know, or that have said, wow, I didn't know that about you and Joe. I mean, I thought you guys were like really good people. Wow, like you guys did that in the past. It's funny to me because I want to remind them, did you forget why Jesus had to die on the cross for us? Just because we're YouTubers and we put our life out there and share our life with everybody doesn't mean that we're perfect. We are not without sin and neither are you. None of us are. If we were perfect, there would have been no need for Jesus to come and die on that cross for our sins to be forgiven, for us to even have the opportunity to go to heaven one day. And so I just find it funny. Um, I'm we are open about our past because I feel like there's power in testimony. I think that the devil wants to keep you in bondage in shame in secrecy of your mistakes and your past and your shortcomings. He wants you to feel so embarrassed and ashamed that you never talk about it because what happens when you do that is you are reclusive and you do not speak about it. You don't reach your hand up and ask for help when you need it because you're so ashamed of what you've done. And I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's addiction to pornography. Hello, <laughs> that's running rampant. Alcohol, drugs, gambling, food, your phone. I mean, we all have a lot of idols in this world that we're not supposed to have. So it doesn't matter what the sin is, we are all sinners. And mine and Joe's hope uh, Joe just started the snowblower, but mine and Joe's hope with sharing our testimony isn't be, isn't to put our business out there. You know, we're not embarrassed about it. We would have been 10 years ago, but with counseling and everything we've done and the work we've done in the last year, we're not ashamed of our past anymore. Our hope is to share with you guys what we do to give hope because I know we're not the only ones that have gone through the things that we've gone through. And people need to know that there is hope on the other side of addiction. And there's hope for your marriage, even when the culture says, no, there isn't, just divorce them. You know, y'all don't really like each other anymore, just leave them, your happiness is all that matters. You don't like the way he leaves his boxers behind the bathroom door, just divorce him. I mean, the culture just tells you, like, in this culture, marriage is nothing. There is no sacredness to marriage anymore. That I do, for better or for worse, means nothing. They're just words to people. And my hope is to show people that when the going gets tough, you don't quit, right? And that's not to say that in a marriage that's completely unhealthy and unsafe, if there's abuse or something like that going on, that maybe divorce is the better option. I have to say that I always get people that are like, you know, I had to leave my husband because he was beating me or you guys, I am not painting with a broad brush here. I know every situation is different. What I'm talking about are the things that the Lord would look at you and go, really? You left him for that? Like. Marriage is supposed to be forever. It's supposed to be a bond between you and your spouse and God. And I know a year and a half ago where I was, I was in a hotel room by myself crying, contemplating divorce. And if you listen to my podcast, I go into more detail about that situation. I share in great detail the point that Joe and I came to a year ago that changed our lives. Joe has done so much work. He has completely transformed himself in a year, year and a half. And because of that, our marriage is changing and every day it's getting better. And it was hard. In fact, Joe looked at me one day and said, Tina, it would have been easier to just walk away than to face the skeletons of the past and the shame and put it all out on the table to forgive, right? It's not easy. 
But the devil doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to sit in the past and sit in the shame so that you're held in that bondage forever and that you're alone and your family life is ruined. You ruin your children's lives. So talking about these things is important and that's why we share the things we do. I'm not embarrassed to share the things that we share here on the channel or on the podcast and Joe wasn't either. I made sure to get his full acknowledgement and consent before I shared any of the things that I shared on our podcast. And if we're okay with sharing our life and the things that we share, then what about it? It's our life, right? Um, and I think that, I don't know about you guys, but I find strength and hope in other people that have walked the same walks I've walked and they've come out on the other side. That gives me hope and it gives me strength and that's why we do what we do. But anyway, I said all that to say, God's plan is always better than ours. <laughs> we think we got it all figured out. And this whole thing with Kellen, it's for me, I, I think as a mom, it's pretty emotional for me. Um, and I did grow up in foster care, so I can relate to a lot of what Kellen is feeling right now. And I'm actually very happy about that. I think sometimes God lets us go through the things we go through so that we can use those experiences to help other people. So anyway, it's pretty crazy. It's crazy that he's here. It still doesn't seem real. It's going to be a big adjustment. You know, he's someone else's child. He's been raised differently than Parker. And, you know, you're kind of meshing the two families together. Um, but we're ready to take it on. And I, I couldn't be happier. And I just, I mean, look at me. I, I haven't even gotten dressed today, you guys. I've been outside with the kids all day. Just came in for a cup of coffee. And it was just on my heart to, to speak on that with you guys. And yeah. Anyway, thank you for all of your comments. You guys have left some amazing comments for us and it's just the sweetest thing. So we're excited to share the journey, yet another adventure. It'll be, it'll be good. It'll be really good. Are you guys soldiers or cops? Bad we, guys. we bad guys. Oh, you the bad guys? Uh huh. Are you coming to rob the bank? Uh huh. Oh no. You. Oh no. You know I'm a ninja though, right? Wait, we ninjas. No, I'm a ninja and I know kung fu. Mm hmm. We ninja bad guys. Ninja we bad, bad guys. guys. Ninjas. We're guns. Okay. <laughs> 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 to dig for it <laughs> oh you guys are handsome look at you in that sunlight that Alaskan sunlight be hey baby I guess y'all came back outside after all huh yeah okay look at you Kellen now you're making it up the big hill good job Are you having fun, Kellen? Yeah. yeah. Are you nice and warm? Good. Let's see. <laughs> oh, it's so bright. I can't even see them down there. Oh, look at how high the sun is. Yes. It used to just come right across the tree line. Now it's all the way up in the sky. Solar panels are loving that, Joe. So the solar panels are loving that. Are you cold? Just wearing oh, my shirt, honey. Yeah, no. That's like really cool. I went. I went oh. to. <laughs> I'm sorry. I went to push the sled, and then my oh. hands scraped the snow, so it flew up in my face. Oh. Do you wanna? You want a earband? Your ears are red. Yeah. Okay, I'll go get you one.
it's not often we get sunshine like this. <laughs> I almost can't even open my eyeballs. Like, <gasps> soaking in that vitamin D though, whenever I can. Oh man, what is it? Going on the end of February? Spring is just around the corner. Start to be. Can I get some comfort, please? I guess I should have been honest. I break to my heart. It's weighing me down, baby. I'm like a river that's overflowed. The sooner you know it, the less do we hurt. Let me speak the truth. Too late, but I can see past the rain. Won't you lay it on me? Turn the page and burn it. Let's make up a big bonfire on the beach with the stars as our lighters and throw our problems in. in 